All right, we're going to continue question number six on our test three review from F1033. Question number six involves factoring. You're given an expression and you're asked to factor it completely. So come with me to the paper and we'll finish it up from the last problem. We still had a couple parts left over. All right, question number six, part E, asks us to factor the expression x to the fourth minus 16. Notice that both of these are perfect squares. Whenever the power, whenever an exponent is an even power, it's a perfect square. And of course, 16 is a perfect square because it's 4 times 4. Minus makes it the difference of two perfect squares. So this is going to start off by factoring as x squared. We're going to have a plus 4, and we're going to have a minus 4. Now, one of the things I always look for first is a GCF. But in this particular problem at the onset, I could see the GCF was just a 1. That wasn't helpful, so I went on to a different method, which in this case was examining that it was the difference of two squares. Now, x squared plus 4 is prime, meaning there's nothing more you can do with it. So you bring it down for the ride. x squared minus 4, however, is the difference of two perfect squares again. So this subdivides into x plus 2 times x minus 2, which makes my final answer x squared plus 4 times the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 2. And that is my final answer. Part F gives me the expression the opposite of 5r to the 4th plus 15r minus 30. This is an expression. I'm going to look for my GCF. And in this particular case, my GCF is going to be the number negative 5. A pretty safe rule to use in algebra. When an expression starts with a negative, the GCF should be negative. Notice the reason we can't take out any r's is because the 30 doesn't have any factors of r in it. I'm going to pull out a negative 5, factor it out is a better way to say it. In the front slot, that would leave me with r to the 4th. In the middle slot, that would leave me with a negative 3r. And of course, the reason it has to be negative, negative times negative is the only way I'm going to get a positive. And in the last slot, I would be left with a positive 6. And again, that reason, negative times positive is a negative. And when you examine the expression r to the 4th minus 3r plus 6, there's nothing more you can do. So this means this expression has been factored completely. So there was nothing else to do other than to factor out the GCF, which is negative 5. One of the things you need to remember in factoring at all times, your first step is nothing fancy. Your first step is always to take out the greatest common factor. And when I look at example G, which is an expression, my first step is to look for the greatest common factor, but that's just a 1. So that means I need to look for something else that might make it factor. Well. When I see a trinomial, I put my two binomials, and I'm hopeful. The front term is going to be a 3x and an x, the front two terms. The back two terms have to multiply together to give me a negative 10. And then kind of by trial and error, we see if we got the right middle term. Well, I think what I'm going to do, of course, to get a negative, one has to be a positive and one has to be a negative. I'm going to try putting a 5 here and a 2 here. This would be a positive 5 and a negative 2. And I'm going to multiply this out to see if I got the right middle term. The outer product is 15x. The middle product is negative 2x. And 15x minus 2x does give me 13x. Remember that it's always the outer. It's always the outer and the inner that are going to give you the middle. The front two give you the front, the back two give you the back, the outer and the inner give you the middle. So my final answer, 
3x minus 2 is one factor, x plus 5 is the other. And we're done. Okay.